In this video, we're going to go over the most common settings which will be useful for you. First, we're going into Preferences. Now, going from the very top, these should already be set to default, so you don't have to touch any of this. So, Preferred User Actions, Associated PST File, Ask User is what our current setting is. So what this is, is basically when you open an image outside of layout, when you make any changes to that image, such as sizing and location of where you want to print and what profile you want to print it with, when you close it out, it can save that PST file within your computer. And when you open that same image back up, it'll have had those settings saved with the image. So for example, it says ask user right now, you can change that to either automatically save the PST file or do not save. So for example, I have that set as ask user. Let's close this out. If I brought this in, and let's say I did top center, and I want it 10 inches wide, and then I decide to close it, it'll ask me if I want to close this. And then it'll ask me if I want to save this. So I'll say yes. So when I bring that image back in, as you can see, the PST file was saved where the image is located. You can bring this back in. And as you can see, the previous settings that we set have been saved. All right, let's go back into preferences. So the next one is layout added to queue. So basically, once you set all of your settings for the image, and then you send it to print, which is also referred to as the queue within NeoRip, you have an option to keep working on the current layout or create a new blank layout. So if I were to do that, let's say I have that set. OK, let's open the layout. I'll bring that image in that was open, top center. Let's say I were to print, OK. As you can see, once I send it into print, it'll open up a new layout. When you go over to open layouts, you'll also still see the previous layout that you had. So if you double click that, it'll open that back up. It doesn't completely close it out. It just opens up a new layout for you to start a new job. So let's go back into preferences. I'm going to switch that back to keep working on current layout. This option. Basically, I have for automatic, but if you want, you can ask user. So every time you send a job to the printer, it'll ask you what you would like to name that job as. For now, I'll leave that as automatic. Preferred help language will be English. Printing preferences, this is your default setting. So whenever you drop anything into NeoRib, you can already have it set to a certain sizing that you like and a certain placement on the plan. This is also where you can change the unit of measurement. So you can go centimeter, inch, millimeter, or points. I'll leave it at inches for now. Now I'm going to go down to layout and then layout options. So here, let me X out of this real quick. So if I were to bring that dog image back in, basically what those settings allow you to do is to customize the color. So Let's say everything's outlined red. So if you change this to green, it'll change the boxes to green. Let's change it back to red. Focused is actually, if I change that to, let's say, green, it's just the points right here on the corners of the image. I'll change that back to black. Click OK. Cost settings, this should be already set up for you by now, but this is where your ink cost will be. This is how the printer actually calculates how much your print costs. So it goes how much each cartridge costs and then how big those cartridges are. Here I can add additional costs. So if I were to say pre-treat and then I go 15 cents, I can change it from per page to per area. And then this is also letting me know which profiles I would like this price to be added to. So let's say I don't put any pre-treat on white shirts, I'll deselect that and it will automatically only add the 15 cents for pre-treat to black, color, and dark. For now, I'm going to remove that, next out. This button for import is usually used for importing color profiles. That should have already been done at the initial time of setup of the program. 
But if, if you ever end up creating new profiles, you can go here to import and then import that file from your computer. This button right here, you can close the layout. That way you just have the image or you can open the layout again. It's a good button to be aware of because if you accidentally close the layout, this layout tab will disappear. So all you have to do is go back to home and then open layout. Panels are the different tool windows that you have available. So let's say this QRIP that you're using to adjust the print. You can go to panels. You can remove that. You can bring it back. And you have a few other panels that you can remove or add on. Print history, you can look up the history of all the prints that you've done. You can increase the number of jobs that you see per page. You can change between pages with these arrows down here. You can add columns. So let's say I want to see the job cost also. You click check. And then now if I enlarge it, I can see that this job I printed on the 5th of February cost it approximately 41 cents. You can also filter the jobs. So let's say I click that button and I want to filter by job cost less than equal to more than, or I can filter by job name and you can filter it also by any of these other categories. This button over here allows you to export your job history to an XML file. This is useful when you want to see your entire job history on an Excel sheet. I'm going to X out of that. These are also other tool panels that you can remove or add. So if I were to remove the tools palette, that disappears right there. Bring it back. Q manager. Next, I have guides. So currently I have show guides. Let's say I wanted to place guides because I know that I want to print a pocket graphic. So I know a pocket graphic, I can place it, let's say two and a half inches off from the center. So this is a 14 inch wide platen. So seven inches is a center point. So if I want to go two and a half inches to the right, then it would help to have a marker at nine and a half inches. I can place a guide there by going to this left side ruler, left clicking and holding and dragging all the way to nine and a half inches. Now you have this guideline that you can use as reference to place your image. So if I were to go 3.5 inches, you can try to move this image over to that guideline by clicking these buttons, but sometimes it's not perfectly accurate. You might need 9.5 to hit it. Or what you can do is go back to zero and then hold the control button on your keyboard, drag and drop, right? But this is a little difficult because it's hard to align it perfectly to that line. At that point, what you can do is go to snap and activate snapping that will allow you to automatically snap into that guideline. If you ever want to remove this guideline, what you can do is hold control again, hover over the line until those arrows appear, and then drag it off the page all the way to the left. The same thing can be done horizontally. Hold control until the arrows appear, and then remove it again. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks.